We get our weekly groceries delivered through Instacart because once football season starts, game time is family time. I can get everything my family needs for the week, from reliable staples to specialty ingredients, all delivered right to my door in as fast as one hour. So I can stay on my game without missing a minute of the game. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time, minimum order $10, additional terms apply. Instacart, add life to cart. Percolate on a particular mix of odd and inspiring news headlines in Wendy's Coffee House. Newsmakers with a pin shot for the unknown unexplained and unusual share their experiences with ufos ghost encounters near-death experiences and more for your own unique blend of wendy's coffee house curious and now here's wendy hello it's been a busy week did you get to see the eclipse north america missed out but i tell you what there's still an energy shift And when you talk to the astrologers, they say, yes, yes, it does make a difference. And if anything, judging by this shift, things are speeding up um, and intensity. And I don't, that's the only way I can describe it. It's like all of a sudden there's an extra amperage (laughs) and you can feel it. So I'm hoping that works for you. And, you know, other people don't always have the same response. But for those of us, anybody who feels this kind of thing, it, it does make a difference. And so... Coming into today, I was uh, up for two hours, asleep an hour, up for two hours. I'm like, okay, this is this must be the energy shift. So here it is. Some of the stuff that's happening, and I did that show just recently with Gerard Artson, who was talking about the George Adamski. He was one of the 50s contactees, the first one who actually said he was taken aboard a ship and then um, given all sorts of like tour introductions on what's going on with the ETs, that, that particular group of ETs, and uh, the humans. A fa- fascinating story, and his messages are still really um, spot on, okay? So if you want to go back to that. Well, what happened was when I was sending my stuff into Jason, the guy who set up the interview and said, here, pass this on to, to uh, Gerard, he said, I was saying I was seeing double. So he sent me, the, this is one of the things that they, that they have on file there at Share International, this, the, uh, an imprint that was taken from, Uh, a mirror, and I get those things on my bathroom mirror, so this isn't news to me, but this imprint, and said, here, with your double vision, just ask for help, and I, so I had this intuition that said, you'll get a sign, and we'll be in touch, I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, so I take a nap, in the middle of the nap, I kind of have a wake, have a sleep, and all of a sudden, I see this chalk white hand reaching out, and it's right beside me, you know, so this would be that hallucination type hypnagogic state, and I'm like, Immediately I wake up. So, of course, I lose whatever else was going with that. It's like, well, there you go. This is my life. (laughs) And it's always um, a surprise, a mystery, uh, a revelation of some sort. I wanted to go back and get that book because I talked about it last week, the book, the the hardback that I brought with me of the UFO drawings from the National Archives, David Clark. And I talked about the story of the little little girl, and that was a 1964 uh, photograph that they took just she's out in the middle of a uh, playground or it looks like a beautiful green field and this little girl probably four or five she's just a beautiful beautiful here it is five-year-old elizabeth and behind her is this picture of they didn't see it at the time something that looks like an astronaut and they have no explanation for it well beyond that i wanted to get back into the other stuff i thought was so cool one of the pictures from 1971 and she tried to draw it as quickly as she could She saw this UFO, and she'd seen them before. This time it was different because she said it projected a beam of light on the clouds, and there was a low-lying cloud, and so she could see, and she could also see the symbols, the signs that were thrown into it because um, the the way it was reflecting, she had images. So she did that and got the images down, and that part of this stuff is fascinating because you get the whole story from these people, not just what they're trying to tell you in terms of, you know, the language and you're reading their story, you're getting the images that they're talking about to give you a a firsthand account of what's going on with some of these things. And the deal with that, which is what I always try to point out to people, if you know it's legit, if you know there's something going on, pay attention to the animals. In this, she says, when this happened, the animals in the neighborhood were going nuts. And she had two dogs. She said they were whimpering like they do during a thunderstorm. During a thunderstorm. 
there are thunderstorms connections with these sightings. Okay, that's just, I'm going to throw that out there. The one thing that I thought was really cool this week that popped up um, from Paul Seaburn, he does a lot of stuff for Mys- Mysterious Universe. He's uh, one of he, I love him because he's, he's like prolific. The giant mysterious creature in Lake Michigan during the storm. This is a video that was posted on Facebook. I got to see it. It was like, whoa. And it looks like it's a ginormous eel. You can't tell what it is, but it doesn't. They, so they don't know. They don't know. They say it could be. There's um, some very large fish that it could be, but that's worth a look. And I got distracted by the sing, singing uh, vet who serenades cows with opera, and the cows do come running. <laughs> then I went back to the one that I thought was really cool, and missing time and teleportation in Argentina. If you ever have these moments where you think you've stepped into an alternate universe, all right, and I like to talk to people who do, uh, this is an example. Now, you're going to have to get this on the Inexplicata. It's a blog. I'll put a link on the website. But it's missing time and teleportation in Tucumán, and the, he drives down a road he normally goes into. All of a sudden, it isn't the same. As a matter of fact, it's so different that he had a friend who had been, um, who died three years earlier, and this is where he's going back to that time. Okay, that's the, the overview. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because this kind of information and more is what you're going to see when you see the interviews that my next guest does. And I'm so glad because he's also pro- prolific. Get that word out. And this is UFO Hub. That's the website. And there's a lecture series coming up that you can check out. And if not, you've got all these videos to um, check out. And we're talking about everything from Kathleen Martin to Nick Pope to um, Eric Von Daniken. And it's just a wonderful list of people that are all experiencers or dealing with experiences and that kind of stuff. And Adnan Ademovich. Is that right, Ademovich, Adnan? Did I get it close? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you, I really love the work you've been doing. And, okay, just to give people an introduction, what, we're coming up, you've got an event coming up, but what got you started in doing all of, all of these videos and getting involved with uh, the UFO Hub? Well, it's, it's actually a side effect of, of the experience that I had uh, in a little bit uh, I'm trying to remember exactly when it happened. It was in 2011, and it was basically a download that I received um, after all the experiences that I had. I kind of had this weird side effect of going into, I guess for lack of a better word, uh, into uh, a minor depression because it was one of those things where I wanted to know about all these things that are, uh, that are going on in the world and that most people don't want to talk about. But I didn't necessarily want to do this, for example, <laughs> you know, yeah. this interview and, and go out there. It's just, you know, it's my life. I want to know what's there. And so um, it was basically just in a form of a download where I um, was shown the entire timeline that there was no accident for everything for me to have learned, all the people I met to give me all the skills that I need to at least um, have the know-how to handle the cameras, know about computers, and um, I went to university and have a um, computer science degree. And so any um, anything that I needed, I had the tools within to just make this happen, to kind of express myself, because it was um, kind of conveyed like in the same sense that I went out to the library and read a book from each one of these people that have written one. Um, I'm also offering a library uh, online to where I'm not going out there selling anything to anyone, but they'll have the opportunity to go, for example, on YouTube and just watch it for free. Yeah, and I, I think it's fantastic. These are people that um, every single one has a story that is unique, compelling, fascinating, and inspiring in some way. And it helps people who are curious get some kind of an idea that they're not the only ones. We, we have a lot of people out here that are doing their due diligence to try and say, hey, there's more here than meets the eye. Just open your eyes or, you know, take take a step off the beaten path and see what you can find. Like the guy, one of your people that I, I really love, the little people, John Quint. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> and he was, I mean, there are so many on here. I've interviewed um, at least four or five of these folks, too. So obviously right. I have a, a passion for this this content. But this is stuff you're not going to find every day. And these people, just to have this available, um, I think is a treasure, a real treasure. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you. I mean, sometimes I don't get to really, other than 
people complaining about stuff online, I don't get to necessarily hear a lot of good feedback, so I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I saw. Okay, you've got an event coming up. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. I want to go back to your story. When you said you got a download, I want to find out a little bit more. Was that anything like a near-death experience, or was this just um, a meditation? Well, the, the, the download basically, um, I guess, it happened as a result of the near-death experience. Okay, hold on. And, uh, wait, wait. We're going to have to do a break. Okay. I want to go back mm-hmm. into that just to kind of set that up because that's I thought I had heard you say that in an interview. I wanted to make sure I hadn't mis- misinterpreted my guest again talking about UFO Hub and a whole a whole lot more with that Adnan Ademovich and we're going to come back with more of his story. Wendy's Coffee House KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House KCMO Talk Radio. My guest is the creator behind UFO Hub. Adnan Ademovich, and I love his work, and it took me a while to figure out. And actually, when I even called him and said, hey, I want to talk to you, he goes like, well, okay, who do you want to talk about? Which which video, which person is this? Yeah, and I'll give you their phone number. No, 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 quit that. <laughs> I want to talk to you. You're the guy behind, you're the brains, you're the, the artist behind all of this. And when we before we went into the break, I wanted to just kind of go back because I had heard you say something in one of the interviews about a near-death experience. And so that's what, I, when you were saying the download I wanted to go back and give a what what happened what what how I mean a, a little more background on that. Right. Well, I don't know how much time we got, but I'll, I'll try to make it quick. Um, it was it's actually it was a long process over many years of just uh, a whole bunch of changes happening to me, and it was um, I was listening to a channel uh, called Bashar. He's, uh, he's channeled by Daryl Income. Some people might have heard yeah. of him uh-huh. uh, out there, and so. I was basically taking him, <clears throat> taking him for his word, and to literally, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times hear about these different changes about, you know, we're all one, and what you put out is what you get back, but that all sounds great, but, and everyone just kind of keeps it out there without ever taking any of it in to see, well, how can I actually apply it to my life? And so, um, long story short, I basically... Um, approach the, the belief system. And he was uh, basically saying that uh, change your belief about something and, of course, you change the way you look at it. And I never really uh, you know, thought about it in that way. I always thought that, well, well if you believe this, you believe it, and that's, that's it, that you're done with, with that. You know, there's not much uh, le- you know, room for, for any kind of change. Right. So, and so I was going through a lot of things, uh, changing out uh, relationships work. I mean, it, it was a lot of uh, uh, the, the whole. I have a whole story online that I've I've done three different um, talks. It's under the the UFO Hub uh, channel. But anyway, so one of them was changing my belief system about what I've been told about psychedelics. And so always, everyone always tells you this is bad. Don't do it. And in some places, it's illegal. And all these other things. And I just, you know, it was it was smart when that realization that. Oh, wow, it's like this is one thing. I just took everyone else's word for it, and I have no experience on my own regarding that, you know. And um, so, having listened to Coast to Coast for a long time, and uh, having heard all the different stories that the government was experimenting with um, all these different psychedelics right. and LSDs and, and all this other stuff, you know, <clears throat> I said, so why can't why can't they experiment, but yet I can't in my own home, you know? And so. Um, it was a journey that started out where I just basically wanted to learn and started out with salvia and DMT, and that alone kind of blew my mind. It's it's almost um, as if the universe says, sit down, and I will show you how things work. And I went back to my friend, uh, and I told him about these experiences that, that was helping me to get this stuff, because I'm not into this. For me, it was for learning, so right, right. I just went once, got it, you know, and so he's like looking at me, he says, I don't know, man, I think you must have had a bad batch, you know, and um, it's, it's something that doesn't happen to him or anyone else. And so, anyway, um, looking at this in this innocent way to where it just kind of expanded my mind to help me understand and learn things about myself, I thought, let me try, you know, the next thing, which was Hawaiian baby Woodrow seeds. And um, I read up on it, and um, my friend has had some as well. So I asked him, well, can I please get some of those? Because it's actually more of a use for like a shamanic ritual. Yes. You know, and yes. I wanted to, you know, to, to approach in that way and say, okay, what else can I learn there? Because after all, it was just me in my own house, you know, uh, not affecting anyone else but myself. Right. And so... 
um, he gave me one, and he said, just take one. That's all you need for for the experience. And he gave me a, 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 actually a batch of 12. I said, just take one. Well, I don't know what I was thinking at that time. I'm, I'm thinking, well, the more I take, the better of experience I'm going to have. Oh, boy. And so I took all 12. <gasps> and um, so anyway, um, at that time, I've had a lot of experiences with, uh, with what happens. Uh, when you take uh, an hallucinogen and what the process is. And each one, of course, it's very different. Mm -hmm. But this one was, um, it was very clear to me that when I, about two hours after I took it, um, my heart started to, to race and a lot of other things were happening that were not happening before on, on, on other experiences. And it was this deep-rooted feeling that I just knew I'm going to die. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started to freak out. I was starting to cry and, and I'm kind of slapping myself in the face, walking and running around the room, kind of screaming and going to the bathroom, trying to puke it out, taking in water because if it's a, a toxin, I'm hoping I could somehow cleanse it out of my body. Right. Well, it was just this, it wasn't so much words. It was just a feeling that overcame me. It said, there's, there's no getting out of this. You know, and then I freaked out even more. And I, I fought this for a long time. I mean, it, it took maybe a couple of hours, three hours of just just staying to with it because my energy and everything was just waning. You know, my, I was losing control of my body. Yeah. Everything was just kind of shutting down, you know, which I would assume that's what it's, you know, I've never been poisoned before, so I don't know, you know, how else it would feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, I couldn't stand anymore, and I didn't want to kind of, just, you know, if this is going to be the end, I didn't want to be on the floor. You know, so I just kind of laid in bed and just held on as, as long as I could and just fought it and I tried to stay focused and everything. So um, I just had then uh, this feeling overcome me again. And uh, I kind of said, you know, kept, kept repeating, saying, you're going to die, but you're not going to die. Mm. You're going to die, but you're not going to die. And, um, you know, it brought me some comfort, but when you know you're losing control of your body and all, all your senses and you're about to go, you know, it, it, it doesn't comfort too much. Mm -hmm. And so soon after, I just kind of took my last breath and I was out. And uh, there were a lot of experiences then that I learned even more that, that took me beyond any of the psychedelic experiences mm -hmm. that taught me a lot more things. And so... Anyway, so I came back, and if you want, I can go into some of the stories later, but the point is I came back, and I learned so much and had this new awakening about, wow, I didn't realize the universe and reality is, is in this way. I mean, it blows everything else out of the water you know, from what I've learned, and, but then there was the problem. You know, I learned it, and now I had this vast knowledge, this vast understanding, but I was not willing to go out and say anything. Uh. And so uh, because of that, I kind of put myself between a rock and a hard place, and then it caused this depression. It's right. almost like an artist not being able to paint, you know, or, or somebody who loves to speak being shut up, yeah. you know. And um, so anyway, and so as, as, as this went on for about a couple of weeks, and I was, I was in the shower, and I'm kind of just kind of depressed. I'm sitting there, and the water just kind of... Uh, just hitting the body and I, I don't care for anything. You know, when you're depressed, all, I just went to work and came home and that was pretty much it. But I was, you know, finally the, the water turned cold. So I wanted to get out. It was getting uncomfortable. And as I was reaching for a towel, I just got this, this download that I can only explain as this download. It was this chill down my spine and I was, my, my all my senses were heightened. Mm -hmm. And it was just this uh, download of thousands of images and concepts and understandings about you know, from the day I was born till, till you know, what happened in Bosnia during the war and then how we fled, uh, trying to find a country that will take us in as refugees and then just kind of pushing us out to the next country saying, you know, the borders are closed, go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, ended up in Germany and then eventually in the United States and meeting the people I met that gave me the skills that I needed to know what I need to know, which then allowed, allowed me now to, to do UFO Hub. And of course, um, the Bilobo itself was what appeared to me in this black void of just these concepts of, you know, UFO. Yes, it means unidentified fine objects, but it means, you know, aliens. It means all the uh, um, all the unidentified things. Right, right. Okay, okay. This is a good place to stop. We're going to take a quick break. 
UFO Hub. You can check it out on YouTube. And again, these stories are fantastic. A wonderful lineup of presenters. And um, there's an event coming up. We're going to talk about that as well, because in August there's going to be an event. You've got some presenters. And I always want to come back because you said, you know, what you picked up on, some things that you learned, maybe some of the, the, the messages that you had while you were out there, because that's what changes everything. Your life is going along, you know, la, 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 la. And all of a sudden there's this, like, an asteroid. <laughs> and you're like, that's, that, 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 that's the real stuff. That's the real, why are they not talking about this? Because this is what counts. This is what makes everything so cool. All right. So we're going to talk more. Adnan Ademovich. It's Wendy's Coffee House. KCMO Talk Radio. Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. Now coming up, Adna Demovich is on my uh, on the phone here right now. We're going to talk, but that this is the lecture series that we haven't talked about yet. August third in Eureka Springs, and you can also get it online if you don't go in person. But there are tickets available now, live streaming available. Um, if you're interested, then connect because it's limited seating, and there's a coupon again for this. It's all at ufohub.net. And the lecture series. All right. What I want to go back into while he's talking about this stuff that he picked up when he was out there. What was it that really got your attention? I mean, that's really, I'm, I'm sure that's a broad subject. But what, what made you just say, OMG, wow, what, what was it? It was literally the whole, the whole part. Because um, being, because uh, I've had body experiences before and that's you know it's totally different than than this part this one was there was no time there was no space it was just a perception of yourself as the the being that we all keep constantly looking for which is god Mm -hmm. and it was simply um seeing myself as, as this small portion of it you know almost like a cell in the body that Without the cells, you won't have a body. Without the body, you won't have cells. Kind of, kind of thing. Right. And, um, and so, uh, as, as I was just kind of trying to adjust to what's what's going on, I started seeing these scenarios, and they would turn into um, actual scenarios, like um, uh, you know, like you and I are talking now, uh, almost very reality-like scenario. And I'm kind of a fly in the wall there, where I would see. Um, uh, for example, my ex-girlfriend at that time and I, um, it's at that moment, we've been broken up for many years, but it was something that that, uh, that weighed heavily on my heart. And so um, it was uh, an experience that was shown to me between us two arguing at this uh, parking lot in front of her apartment. And I'm you know, kind of upset about something. She's upset about it. And so there's me as the observer kind of just hovering around it. Try and trying to figure out what's going on for one and memories coming back of, yeah, I remember this moment. And, and, and I'm looking at her and she's kind of gesturing with her arms and being all pissed off at whatever I was doing. <laughs> and so she just kind of stopped, uh, looked at me, winked at me, the, the person that was observing, the hovering around, winked at me and went back to the argument. Wow. And in that instant, I had this, this understanding that uh, we're all know why we're here we all know what we're doing we're just playing these specific roles and parts for each other that um um whatever for whatever reason she needed that experience and i needed it so we kind of like actors set it up so that on this limited human perspective it will play out like a play but on a higher level there's a different understanding to it and so right after that I uh, then saw my parents, and you know they're they're still young in their fifties and sixties, and very active, and uh, you know they're, they're not dead, uh, especially not at that time. So mm-hmm. uh, it it was confusing me, and they were they were pretty young, maybe in their twenties, and I haven't seen them that young since since if I if I reach far back in my memory bank probably since I was a kid yeah and so they were kind of standing there glowing blue and so I just kind of floated towards them and there was this a feeling and understanding of these uh, 
friends, beings, whatever you want to, however you want to describe it, that I've that we've known each other forever, you know, and uh, just this raw, unfiltered love towards each other, you know. If, I mean, imagine any kind, the deepest love you can possibly imagine, multiply that by infinity. I just can't describe it, yeah. you know. Uh, and so uh, we're we're having, we're trying to recall exactly what we're having, just kind of like this. Hey, you know wow, wasn't this great and this kind of thing. And I just stopped and, and, and in, our, in our life here on earth, we don't have that kind of relationship. Because um, I was originally born in Bosnia and lived there until I was eight, until the war broke out. And um, generally the way the Bosnians raise the kids, you know, is what we would kind of consider abuse in the United States, but it's just the way they, they, they raise them. Mm-hmm. And so um, for me being the way I am, I always took it, you know, um, took it extra hard, you know, uh, all the, the beatings and the verbal abuse and all these other things that it was, it was weighing heavily on me because, you know, they're my parents. I love them. I never understood why they were like that. And so while I was interacting with them on this different level, I was just about to bring that up to go, what in the world happened? And uh, a memory came back of us very much like at that moment, uh, making an agreement. It actually was me begging them to be my parents in this lifetime and begging them to be in the way I need them to be so that I can become the person I am today. Wow. Because your higher self, the, the, the being that kind of uh, lays out your path for yourself, knows what you need to be squeezed just the right amount mm-hmm. to, to learn certain things, to go into certain directions, to experience certain things in life that then the soul can just add to its, to its jar, I guess. Yeah. you know, that makes, makes up the soul. And so, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Oh, so anyway, so I remember begging them to be the way they are. And, uh, it, it was just this, this shame that overcame me because, uh, having the memory of, I asked them for this, I even had to beg them for this. And I was so harsh towards them, mm-hmm. you know, towards all the things that they were doing because I thought that was just wrong. And on this, on this world, in this, in these rules, yes, generally when you don't remember, you made an agreement, you know, that all the things that we think of for as abuse, it applies, but not from the higher perspective from the higher agreement, especially since I asked them to do me this favor. Yeah. And so all the time I was hating on them and, and just wished all the bad things, you know, <laughs> made me feel guilty. And it was one of those things where I wanted to have this feeling of, of, for, you know, like, you know, please forgive me. And it was one of those things. It's like, there's nothing to forgive. It was your experience. Forgive yourself. Mm. You know, and um, so anyway, and it kind of went on. There were many more experiences. I don't know how many more you want right. me to share. Right. Well, I think that that's a wonderful overview because it gives you a perspective of, of what the higher self knows and what the little mini-me is going, you know, kicking and screaming all the way. Of, I didn't ask for this. Well, you just don't remember it. <laughs> get, right. get over right. it and go forward. And, and that applies uh, uh, That applies for everything. Uh, your work environment, your friendships, um, anything that requires your any kind of interaction with anybody, know that they're just there for your sake, you know, if somebody's pushing your buttons, they're pushing your buttons because you need to realize that you have something there within you that doesn't mesh with you. And so they're helping you bring that up for you to be able to look at and learn something from it. But we don't see it that way. Uh, my question is, since I've seen the little kiddos in the backseat, you did a wonderful little promo for the event, the hotel. Um, it's on your, your page, the about page. And you and y- y- the two of you, you and your wife are sitting in the front and you said the kids didn't want to be seen on camera. And, uh, oh, right. <laughs> and so <laughs> I like it when they finally spot the billboard that you guys have your advertisement and you know, the camera's on the billboard. And then from the back seat, I think, is a little shriek of, Woo! I, I don't <laughs> I don't think that's her. It sounds like it sounds like one of the minions in the back. And um, right. then they they decide they decide that it, it wasn't too embarrassing that they could be seen because after that then then they are are seen little you know brief sightings on camera that was that, that's a riot. 
Right. Well, we have a one and a half year old and an 11 and a half year old. So th they both, for some reason, are usually very loud, but decided to be quiet. <laughs> and so I, they realized what we were doing. So they kind of became comfortable after after a few minutes. Mm -hmm. That's when they decided to show their heads. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like, OK, this isn't too embarrassing. Fine. We'll be here. Right. But it, it was the thing is, though, with your experience, you talked about I want to come back. We're going to take a, a, a quick break again. I want to come back and ask if that makes a difference now, how you treat people and how you see it from a different perspective. I want to ask that. Um, and again, this is an incredible, incredible treasure trove of content, ufohub.net. Check it out. And if you can get to the event, that's great. If can't, you, you can stream it. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next break, too. Adnan Ademovich, and that's on KCMO, Wendy's Coffee House. Wendy's Coffee House, and KCMO Talk Radio. Hey, thanks for tuning in. If you miss anything, I'll, I'll put the links on the Blogspot site. And um, there, there are so many stories and so many events that somehow beg us to expand our horizons, our awareness, and get outside of our little boxes to see that there are extraordinary, extraordinary happenings each and every day with people all around us. And that's why I was pointing out earlier the, the guy who talked about the little people. There are people who talk about being abducted. There are people who talk about seeing UFOs, people who talk about channeling, people who talk about um, having extraordinary experiences that they can't, that they still, in some way, shape, or form, maybe haven't completely integrated. I know with Mike Cleland, who talks about the owls and how they are connected to ET sightings, is that's a fascinating thing. He, he wrote his version, and then he also collected stories from other people finding out that there's a whole lot out there, synchronicity. And recently, the owls, we've had them for uh, three or four years in our neighborhood, and they a pair, and we actually got a picture of the pair of owls on the tree at night. They stayed, they were further away. And so then the next day, one of the owls came up and gave me a wonderful, beautiful portrait of her sitting at the water bath, drinking from the bird bath. And I'm like... I'm doing the right thing at the right time, and that owl is my bookmark, okay? So so those kinds of things that you, you know, I'm integrating that and making that one of my little moments of synchronicity, saying there's a reason for things, right place, right time. And so when you're looking at the stuff that Adnan has on his website and the listening to his stories, connecting with that higher purpose, that higher element, we aren't always aware. We just kind of go through the motions and then realize how the dots connect afterward. I don't like it when you had that experience where your girlfriend winked at you as you were seeing from the overview that, see, there's a reason. And now I, when you're talking about the kids here, you were also talking about how you felt such guilt. Does that make you treat your children any differently now, you know, to kind of a preemptive guilt thing <laughs> to get over well, it? That, definitely not to the extent that my parents were uh, because we, we tried to – to talk to them, of course, we still have to yell at them or get onto the stuff when they're doing, you know, I guess, forgive me if I'm, I'm not sure if we can use cuss words, but when you do like stupid things, you know, it's like, <laughs> what were you thinking? You know, that type of thing. Right. And so uh, the, the point is, uh, we choose each other and, and uh, the, um, for them choosing us to be their parents, they would know how we would be in the way we react things. And it's, that's what they need. And in the way that they respond is what we need as parents. And it's, it's, um, um, I don't, I don't mean this in this kind of uh, wishy-washy way, but I, I learn from my kids all the time, you know, and, but that doesn't mean that I stop being a parent. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of my, a lot of times, especially my oldest son, you know, still keeps, um, kind of teaching me things about forgiveness still, because, you know, um, I still coming back, you kind of come back to the person you still agree to be. My parents didn't all of a sudden stop being who they were just because I now have become aware of this higher plan. Uh, if they still continue being the way they are, but now it gives me a choice to choose to interact with them differently. And for that uh, reason, um, you know, being the way that I was growing up, you know, it's when somebody makes you mad, it's something that generally in, in, in my soul's purpose that you don't, you know, oh, at least on this level, like, you know, they did something wrong. I can't forgive them easily. You know, yeah. and so I remember when my parents would get on to me about stuff, uh, we kind of wouldn't speak 
you know, for a couple of days, if not longer. And, um, and when, uh, especially the oldest, my son, uh, you know, is actually adopted son, but I consider him my son, mm-hmm. um, would do something, you know, I would get onto him and then I would kind of shut down and it would be just, you know, a couple hours later, he'll just come back and hug me, you know, and it's one of those things to where it's so weird for me because that's not how I grew up. You know, it's like, we're having a conflict. We have to stay enemies, mm-hmm. you know, but not from his point of view. So, like I said, they're always you know, teaching me something as much as we are teaching them as parents. I want to get, before we run out of time, into the event. This is the first lecture series you've done, and um, I think it's really, really a step in the right direction. You've got Nick Redfern, Sherry Wild, and Scott Nelson. And I've interviewed Nick, uh, and I haven't interviewed the other two. I've, I'm familiar with them, but it's a nice, diverse content. Are you, uh, is this going to be an annual thing? Uh, no, actually, the the plan, I don't know if it's going to stay in the same format that it is now, but it's hoping to do it several times throughout the year because I, I wanted to make it normal. You know, I wanted to have uh, have it normalized to where people can actually come and see people often in person. But for it being the very first event, I want it to be small, so it's something that we can handle as the event organizers. And at the same time, um, I, this for these five years I've been doing this, and I will still continue every interview I put out there online is for free. But the world doesn't necessarily function still in this utopian society, so I still have to pay event, uh, not the vendors, the um, the conference center and mm-hmm. internet speed, and people come and help me, and uh, the flights and food for the speakers and so on. So it was it was kind of weird for me to to have to charge, but it, there was no other way to actually make it happen because I wanted to this way, it's kind of going to help me put more interviews out because every lecture series uh, will be posted online and interviews that I do with them online for people to watch for free. So the benefit by the event is for people to actually come and meet these people that have the presentations to have dinner with them and so to kind of interact for those people that are into that. And if you're not, then you can still watch it online uh, for free or if you're willing to support UFO Hub, then it's, there's a, um, uh, online streaming as well. So anyway, any of this charging is just so it helps bring in more speakers uh, and it will allow me to put more content out there. Because for the past five years, it was all um, you know just out of pocket uh, from my work and my wife's work and just because I love it. But with family and you've seen them, you know, it's kind of, um, it's hard to say, okay, well, I got to go to, to this conference to do interviews and I need two grand. You know, that means how's that <laughs> going to affect the family now? Right. You know, so it's, it's I can't take the same, same routes and same actions as I have in the past when I was single. Well, I thought I, I like the the diversity, and I like uh, to give you an, an example. If you're listening, Nick Redfern, he's he he's one of my favorite. I've interviewed him several times. Men in Black, Chupacabra, Women in Black, UFO conspiracies, the UFO of the day sightings. Um, Sherry Wild, she had an incredible experience. Um, all of a sudden, ET contact, and that was something she did not expect. So here we go. She's you know a normal, level headed. Everything is just peachy keen, and all of a sudden she's got E.T. stuff. All right, and that was enough to make her think she was crazy. And then Scott Nelson, and is he with the, is it a cryptid, big, Bigfoot? Is that what his background is? Yeah, he's a cryptolinguist. He, he's still, um, I don't know if he would consider himself a uh, cryptozoologist. He just knows that the, the, the things he analyzed, the, the footage that's claimed to be Bigfoot uh, language, um, he used his military expertise to break it down and explain why it is a language. So he most, mostly approaches it from this uh, scientific cryptolinguist okay. uh, approach. These are folks that if you're not curious, <laughs> after hearing them, you will be. And so I really, I'm, we're running out of time. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, I just wanted to say, well, the reason for that variety is as much as we all think that they're all separate things, they're actually all um, um, representations of the one and the same energy. It just manifests in different ways. And so that's why I have this diverse uh, amount of people on the YouTube channel and wanting to come to the lecture series for people to slowly start realizing that there are connections there between governments, ETs, ghosts, Sasquatch, Chupacabra, you name it. You know, all these different things are just representations of the one thing. 
I agree. I agree. I thought when I got into the, the intuition stuff and things started happening with metaphysics and my nightlights, which are 24-7, that interactive with that energy, um, once you become curious and have one experience, then it's like you're into the whole bag of potato chips before you know it. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> makes life a lot more interesting. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you are doing this and that you've got big plans to continue doing more and that it is free at YouTube. If you miss anything, the website, you can check it out, UFO Hub on YouTube, Wendy's Coffee House. I'm going to put the links there for you. The lecture series, this is in August, so you've got time to plan ahead and make it. In the meantime, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. All you have to do is say, what? And look and question. See ya. When things feel a bit chaotic, Instacart helps deliver milk and sausage. Add a little life to your cart. Get stuff from literally all your stores, from baby wipes to albacore. Add a little life to your cart. Instacart helps get your groceries. Your first three deliveries are free. Download Instacart. Add life to cart. Terms apply. <laughs>